Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our IMI Global EID TAG webinar. Uh, my name is Ashley Smith and I am the sales coordinator for IMI and today I have Megan Beaupre um, who she's going to talk about our EID tags, answer all of our frequently asked questions that um, we get from producers and uh, Megan would you introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, like she said, I'm Megan Beaupre, and I manage all the EID tags here at IMI Global, but also am a regional manager, customer verification specialist here at IMI Global, and work with uh, a lot of our beef producers here on the beef team, and I've been with IMI Global for a little over four years now. Sweet. All right, so first question um, we get most often is, how do I order EID tags? Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, when we send out new customer enrollment packets to all of our ranches, we include that EID tag order form uh, to everyone. They can either fill that out, sending it, send it into their customer verification specialist. It's also on our website. Um, and to also just make it really easy, they can just call into the office and we can work with you and figure out what type of tags is needed for your operation and get those out as soon as possible for you guys. That um, segues into another question, Megan. What kind of tags are there to choose from for producers? Um, we definitely have a lot of options uh, for our producers. We work with two companies actually, so Allflex and then Datamars, which also carries temple tags. Uh, so you can get Allflex tags or temple tags, just kind of whatever works best for your operation, kind of what your preference is on the different brand of tags. Um, you can def get uh, just our regular tags, which don't aren't tied to a premise ID number or anything like that. Uh, they work for all of our programs, and most common colors are green. You're probably aware of our green IMI EID tags. Uh, they also come in white or yellow, um, and we can also get different like video branded tags. So uh, like Pink Superior tags are very well known for, and we can also get you uh, Western Video Market EID tags. Great. So um, you kind of touched on it here a little bit ago, um, talking about a premise ID number. So can you tell us the difference between like an 840 tag and then your normal um, regular EID tags? So the 840 tags are another option that we offer to our producers that are tied specifically to a premise ID number that is tied to that specific ranch that was either issued from your state veterinarian or your state animal health official. Um, so that EID tag is tied to that specific uh, location where you guys are tied to. And we have to ship those tags directly to that location where they that premise ID number is tied to as far as that location goes. Um, they, like I said, all our EID tags work for all of our programs. The regular ones would start with a 900 series. So like 982, 985s, 988s, they don't require that premise ID number, uh, but the 840s do require that premise ID number. And we do have to have that in order to order the tags by up front. Great, thank you. Um, one of our other common questions is, what's the difference between an HDX tag and an FDX tag? Yes, so um, the color differences that we can start off with um, is the yellow and the green EID tags are all FDX tags, which stands for full duplex, and all the white EID tags are HDX, which stand for half duplex. And actually the half duplex put off just a little bit stronger readability on those tags. So when you have an EID reader going to scan those tags, it just puts off a little bit stronger signal um, compared to the FDX tags. Um, so a lot of our breeding operations kind of use those, um, or if you're scanning tags from a little bit farther away, the HDX ones are a little bit more preferable in that producer's eyes. But as far as the most common tags out we order for producers, they're not necessarily reading those tags, and the FDX ones are the most common ones that we send. But not a huge difference, but the HDX just put off a little bit stronger signal than the FDX does. So, um... You, when a producer looks at the tag order form or um, they're ordering tags over the phone with their regional CDS, 
Um, one of the questions they get asked is um, sequential versus non-sequential. So could you touch a little bit on that and what the differences are on those? Yeah, so um, with both of the tag companies that we work with, we have the ability to order tags um, all in sequential order, which means uh, from the very first EID tag that you receive to the very, very last tag that you receive. So if you get 500 tags, um, all those tags will be in sequential order. So it really helps with those producers that are cross-referencing to a, a visual tag on the ranch um, and tying individual birth dates or any other um, information with that specific animal to those EID tags. So it's helpful as far as that standpoint goes. Uh, the only difference is they do take a little bit longer in production. So um, we do ask to allow for an extra week uh, if you would like to order tax in sequential order. Um, as far as non-sequential order goes, uh, depending on the tag company, they'll either come in bags of 20 or bags in 25. And that means within that bag, they will be in sequential order from start to finish, but it's not guaranteed that all the bags will line up to be in sequential order. Just kind of as far as that's what their inventory is that they have in their warehouse. So we can usually get those tags out a little bit quicker if you're needing them as soon as possible. It's just not guaranteed that everyone, all the EID tags will be in sequential order. So it's com completely what the producer would like if they are keeping track of all those different records with each animal tied to that EID. We do recommend getting the sequential tags, um, but if it's not really a preference um, and you're not tying that information out, the bags of 20 or bags of 25 or the not for the sequential or the non-sequential um, tags will work just fine for the operation. Great. Um, so you kind of touched on this a little bit um, with in regards to time. So one of our most frequent questions we get is how long does it take to get tags ordered and then um, delivered to that ranch operation? Okay, so it's really kind of based on a lot of different factors as far as if you want them sequential and non-sequential, what type of tags that you're getting. Um, we do offer custom tags as well. Uh, they're called the match sets, which are a visual tag and an EID tag. Those take quite a bit longer, but as far as just, I would say probably most frequent orders that we get is just our standard green FDX EID tags, bags of 20. Um, we can usually get those to you within a week. Uh, all the tags ship out of Texas, so just kind of depending on where you're at located in the country, really kind of depends as far as UPS or FedEx, it's shipping map, as far as how soon you will get those tags upon ordering those tags. So, um, but there's a lot of different factors on it, but I would say overall turnaround time would probably be about a week. Um, but like I said, we kind of prefer producers to at least be 10 days ahead of it, just especially during shipping if there's, or during shipping time in the fall where there's a high volume of tag orders coming through or whether it be in the winter with ship or uh, weather being bad as far as UPS or FedEx not getting them in timely manner just to get them ordered ahead, ahead as possible. Um, so that way we can get those prior to whenever you need to apply those tags. So um, another common question is um, when ordering tags, producers want to know, um, you know, do they have to order exactly the amount of head they have or can they order extras? Um, if they can order extras, is there a specific number? So how many? Um, what does that kind of look like? So we definitely work with our producers when it comes to um, how many tags that they need, if they need to get a couple extra uh, with the bags of 20 or bags in 25, uh, that kind of really um, would require producers to order probably some more tags than what they're needing if they need them as soon as possible. But you are allowed to order more tags than you actually have headcount support for. Um, and we can kind of work with that number and kind of discussing with you as far as how many extra tags you need in case one for whatever reason may break or um, if you lose one or 
there was just problems with applying that tag, which is not as common, but we can definitely work with producers of getting extra tags ordered. But the real, um, what it really comes down to is when we go to approve that operation or approve that calf crop, uh, we will only approve however many head that you have headcount support for. And if you have like 30, extra tags as far as on top of what your headcount support, we will ask to know what those leftover tags that you did not apply. So that way we get the correct ones approved for the operation. So it kind of um, is how you want to handle it. If you want to order a bunch of EID tags that are extra to have on hand, um, that's fine. But just on the back end, you're going to have to let us know what EID tags that you do not use if you don't have the headcount for that order. But segues perfect into my next question. Um, so can you uh, use extra leftover or unused tags and uh, can I return tags? <laughs> um, so you can use leftover tags. So when we send out those tags uh, for whatever company in that box will be a tag manifest listing of all the EID tags, how to apply the tags, and there'll be a tag inventory report. So for whatever tags that you do not use, you can list out those tags on the tag inventory report and send that into your CVS and they'll get those records updated accordingly. Um, so you can use leftover tags, um, unused tags, whatever that may be. All the EID tags are a one-time use tamper evident tag. Um, so if you were to apply that tag and it were to break or you had to cut it out if a calf was treated or didn't go as program, whatever the case may be, um, you cannot reuse that tag since they're one-time tag. But as far as leftover tags, uh, you can carry them over from calf crop to calf crop as long as you tell us what those numbers are. Because um, what it comes down to is when we go to approve each of those calf crops, we tie those EID tags into our system to a first calf born date. So if you use a leftover tag from a previous year um, and you don't let us know what those tags are, they may be approved for the specific claims, but they're approved to the wrong calf crop. So when those calves go to ship to the packer, they're going to scan those tags and uh, more likely than not, they're going to show up to be over 30 months of age, which will kind of put off a big red flag. So as long as you tell us what those leftover tags, we'll get them allocated correctly to that calf crop for you guys. Can I return tags? <laughs> oh, um, we do not um, offer any type of refund as far as tags or allow return on tags. Um, so what we do recommend is if you have a calf crop that for some reason didn't go as program that year or you're just not enrolling that calf crop, you can like since you can use leftover tags, you can hold those over to be the next year. But as far as once we ship those tags to you, uh, we cannot refund any tags or take those tags back. Gotcha. So um, we have some producers that a lot of times they hold over a bunch of steers and heifers um, from last year. Um, can can they buy tags for them as well? Yes. So um, you can buy tags for any type of animal on your operation. So to ask or to answer that specific question, as long as they're on the ranch, um, if we come on site and you have a set of yearlings that you want to get approved in the program and you have some calves that are hitting the ground that year, we can get both of those calf crops approved in that same cycle. And as long as they're still in the ranch, those, those calves can be tagged and approved for verification programs. So you can definitely order tags for any holdovers, any yearlings that you still have on the ranch. So the key is just applying to those calves before they're shipping off the location. Um, we do not allow if the calves have shipped to a background or a feed yard, uh, calves cannot be tagged at that source of origin or that location and still remain in the program. Good, good. Um, so do I need to cross-reference my visual tags with my EIDs? Is that important at all or does it even matter? Um, so it's kind of, like I said before, um, it's kind of a preference on what you decide to do with some of that additional information. It is not a requirement to tie each branch tag and corresponding to an EID tag. Um, however, if you have the ability to do that, we do recommend it uh, just because as far as if once your calf, once the calves leave your guys' ranch of origin, and if they were to lose a tag during uh, shipping on the trailer um, and they show up at the feed yard without any ID tag, or even if that calf 
arrives at the feed yard with an EID tag and it were to lose a tag for whatever reason, if we do not know what that old EID number was of that animal, that calf is kicked out of the program and would be disqualified. Um, if you were to cross-reference an EID tag to a ranch tag, uh, we can then go to that record and know what the old EID number was and the feed yard would be able to re-tag that animal at the feed yard to keep them in the program. So it's not a requirement, but it is helpful on the back end if you do corresponding, if you have that ability. Awesome. Um, so earlier you said when I receive, uh, when our producer receives their EID tags in that box, there's a tag manifest, and there's also like some instructions on how to apply the EID tag. Can you kind of walk us through on how a producer should apply that EID tag into that animal? Yes, it's a very common question that we get here, but um, yeah, so there is instructions in the box of how to apply the EID tag, but um, there is two parts to the EID. So there's the actual EID button uh, that had that is the readable part of the EID. So that's gonna, what's gonna be read when someone's reading those tags with a scanner. And it has the 15 digit number, uh, that unique number on that button tag. And then there's a tag back. So uh, they call the, the actual EID button the female portion of it and the tag back the male portion of it. So the EID button or the female needs to go on the inside of the ear and the male portion or the tag back would need to go on the outside of the ear. And we do recommend um, putting it about two thirds of the way into the ear on the inside. Uh, that just gives your longest term retention rate. So they, if they're on this tip of the ear, they have higher chances of getting caught in a fence or whatever the case may be. And you may have a little bit more higher percentage of losing the ID tag. So to get that highest retention to be about two thirds of the way in the ear and the EID button or the female portion needs to go on the inside of the ear. So does it matter when a producer applies their EID tags? Um, does it matter which ear they put them in uh, and then do you have any recommendations on in either in either of those questions? Um, so we actually don't have a preference as far as what EID tag or the EID tag goes in what year. Um, I mean, our main focus is that they're tagged prior to shipping, but as far as kind of at the end level, so at the packer level, they do uh, like to see that EID tag in the left ear. It's just kind of easiest and we'll get the probably most accurate when reading the tag. So if at all possible, apply it in the left ear, but if you're not able to, if you already have a tag in that ear um, or the ear froze off or whatever that case may be, uh, you can't apply it in the right ear. So we just have a requirement that the tags have to be applied prior to shipping. Great. Well, uh, that is all that I have. Megan, uh, do you have any thoughts or opinions or any other bits of information that you think would be helpful for producers to know? Um, nope, I mean, there's a lot of different tag options out there. Um, we know as far as based on our tag order form and we get continuous questions every day about it. So uh, when in doubt, just give us a call and we'll help you walk through that, those different options and finding out what EID tags um, may be best fit for you. If you have a premise ID number, if you don't, if you just want an EID tag, uh, we, like I said before, I didn't really hit on it too much, but we do offer match sets, which kind of help with the corresponding of EID tags too. So the match sets are a visual tag and an EID tag. They are two separate tags, but the EID number is printed on that visual tag. So it helps with that cross-referencing portion. Um, we can get those customized to whatever, as far as color, size, if you want your ranch name, a brand, your phone number on it. Um, so if you have any type of specifics that you want, just give us a call and we can uh, help you with developing on what that may look like for you guys. Um, but other than that, just uh, make sure you tag your cattle before you ship and uh, just give us some time to get those ordered and out to you prior to applying those tags. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Megan. I appreciate you taking some time to chat with us and um, thank you guys for listening. Uh, and again, if you have any questions or concerns about um, ordering EID tags or any additional questions about EID tags, please feel free uh, to contact us at our office or um, check us out online at imiglobal.com. Thanks. Thank you.